Today we have a special guest going to come join us for the entire uh, segment. We oh, have uh, the Dale Ellis of Destrahan, oh. Steph Curry from St. Rose, <laughs> the Clay Thompson from Claiborne Avenue, <laughs> David Washington all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina. What's up, everybody? What's going on? As we always start off our show, what are you drinking? We're going to start off with Dave Washington. I got my... Where's my Modelo? <laughs> hey, right. no, never mind. Hold on, wait a minute. I got my Yingling right here, bro. Yingling. <laughs> With beers on us. Yeah. It's like WandaVision, man. Huh? Social media. It's social. Yes, right. It's WandaVision, brother. It's WandaVision. I can do that. In a few minutes, it'll be juice. Okay. Donnie started off with Modelo, bro. Now he just got Negro is all he got now. <laughs> Modelo disappeared on me, bro. You got black tan. Well, never mind. I'll find it. Modelo, right? oh, okay. There you now, go. There now, you now, go. What, what are you drinking, Don? I got a little, you know, screwdriver here with a splash of grenadine. You heard me? Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tyronius? Got a nice little white wine there, bro. It's a little Moscato, a little sweet wine today, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should I put that pinky out there? Like, wait. <laughs> pinky up, bro. Pinky up. This is a very good year, 2021. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. That's a new year. Get that corona out of it. You know what I'm saying? Get yeah, that'll burn it out, you, bro. <laughs> I got a little rum and coke with a little cruzan rum there. It's a and lot of coke. That's print. a lot of coke. That's a whole lot of. Look at that glass, bro. That's industrial strength. <laughs> got a lot of problems. <laughs> so I need a lot of rum and coke. So our first topic, guys, since we have uh, Dave here, let's start off with football. Uh, Dave was a great football player um, in high school. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. Cornerback. So let's start off with wide the- receiver. Wide receiver. Wide receiver. And free safety. Yeah, offense, bro. Oh, I knew it was oh, defense. defense. I said, I said, I said no, it was <laughs> And free safety too. The man used to snatch stuff out there, bro. Oh, I, oh, oh I remember. I remember well. So let's start off with our first uh, topic. Uh, Dave, we'll let you lead us off. Who is the biggest threat to Tampa Bay Buccaneers next year? I still would say the Saints. Okay. I want to say the Saints in the division. I, I, I mean, um, I don't see anybody else. May, it could be Kansas City again, but I think the Saints have a, have a better uh, shot of um, giving them a little bit of a challenge, you know, because I still believe Drew Brees is coming back, you know. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I believe I told Don that the other day. I said, the man has not retired. He can't retire with that performance, you know? And I believe that he played so bad and he was directly responsible for the loss. And the last thing you're going to remember is that performance. So I'm thinking that's the only way they can really give them a push because I don't believe Taysom Hill's the answer. James is not mature enough to play it. So I just, I think, I think because of Drew Brees, that may be the only reason why they can be a challenge. So if he's not playing, there's no challenge in that division, and there's okay. So, that's all. So I you're say. saying you're saying that uh, the Saints in division will beat Tampa Bay, or has the best chance to beat Tampa Bay before they even reach the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. I don't, I don't know anybody else right now. I mean, we, could, we could still say Kansas City. You know, I still would say Kansas City just because of that performance, but they're the best team in the AFC to me. You okay. know, and I don't see anyone else. Pittsburgh showed you that they were paper champions. You know, they all that winning for nothing, you know, and I don't believe in Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. Okay. You know, I just don't believe that. I mean, I know he's a great athlete and everything, but I just don't believe that he's he can will that team into a position and, and dissect defenses the way you need a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers or a Drew Brees to do in the playoffs and moving forward to the Super Bowl. Okay. So I would say the Saints, Green Bay, Seattle maybe. You know, Seattle maybe, but other than that, I, I, I'm going to say the Saints. I'm, I'm not trying to be prejudiced because it's my team and we're rooting for them. I'm just looking at it because it's still top to bottom. 
probably the second or third best team in the NFC. I will give Tampa Bay that edge because they did win the Super Bowl. But you know, they they have a they can they can beat this team. They really should have beat them the, the time they played them. You know, it's just right. that Drew Brees was so injured and they really wasn't talking about how bad he was hurt that he showed it, you know, how he played in that game. He was directly responsible for the loss. I I, I look at it like that. Okay. And you don't want your teammates, excuse me. <clears throat> you don't want your teammates, you got fans saying it's time for them to retire, and you don't want your legacy to be left with that performance. So I'm, I'm only predicating that on I hope that he comes back okay. to write that strip, that, that ship back a little bit, a little bit. Because Taysom, he'll prove the five games he played, he's not ready. I don't believe he's ready. Maybe some people do, but I don't believe he's ready. We would, would have been better with Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. I agree with that. Don, what, yeah. what's your uh, take on it? No, I kind of agree with DW. I mean, you know, you look at us, we New Orleans Saints, and I say us, New Orleans Saints, we all Saints fans here are, are poised to be in the driver's seat again next year. Uh, we have depth. Uh, we we showed that we could beat Tampa and we had their number. We just didn't beat it when it beat them when it when it counted the most in the playoffs. Um, that's where I think coaching and then you know the the ability for your talent to be healthy. Uh, we always talk about health of players when you get into the stretch of the season, uh, especially at the end part of the season. And so everybody else. Uh, basically was getting healthy. Our quarterback position, unfortunately, was pay- playing through injury. And so that's what hurt us the most. We have an injured veteran quarterback. Um, I really believe Jameis Winston is the future of this franchise. If Drew Brees decides to step aside, I think we have some continuity with him. Will he be perfect like a Drew Brees? No. But I think he has the abilities that a lot of people are overlooking. And somebody told me this the other day, and I thought it was a great observation and that was that, you know, Sean Payton showed everybody what Teddy Bridgewater could do, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. And I'm not going to say it backfired on him, but it, it, it turned out to be an acquisition for uh, Carolina Panthers. And they paid big money to get him over there. Now, was he the answer to help them, you know, get to the next level in our division? I think it takes some time for that to, to you know, to grow. And they, they shouldn't expect, like, Teddy Bridgewater was going to be the answer to all of their issues and all their woes. But I do believe we have a quarterback in the building. I think Taysom Hill still should be retained to continue his slash program where he's this, that, and the other. He, he actually does pretty good with blocking, punt return, uh, you know, gadget plays off the line. You know, uh, he's, he's vital to our organization to keep the defenses get, guessing. So I think we should draft a, a, a quarterback, a rookie that would learn underneath those three and, and continue to allow Jameis Winston to lead the show now. And, and uh, he has the arm, which is going to open up that deep side of the playbook again for us, uh, where, you know, the Russell Wilsons, the Aaron Rodgers, all have, they also have access to that deep side of the playbook, which can be a problem for Tampa Bay. If you could throw the ball deep, and get it off within one or two seconds, you can beat Tampa Bay. So that that's my feeling on it. So, th- so your your take is a New Orleans Saints team with Jameis Winston is the biggest threat to, to uh, Tampa Bay. Yes, sir. Okay, Tyrone. I would say, well, we always know that the rich get richer, right? So free agents is the biggest factor, determining factor, what's going to happen. You look at the Rams acquiring Matthew Stafford. And that puts them in a, a pretty good driver's seat. Um, he's been plagued by like a fracture or something in his back. But he's historically been on bad teams in Detroit. And so it's a way for him to prove himself. Um, he's going to have a, a one of those genius coaches, kind of in the style of uh, Sean Payton. Uh, but you also look at somebody like J.J. Watt. What if he went to the Saints? What could he do for the Saints bolstering that defense? His brother wants him over there at Pittsburgh, so T.J. Watts wants him to be alongside him. But imagine if the rich got richer and he got to the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers. How much more awesome their defense, which really is the thing that carried him through their playoff run, and the Super Bowl was their dominant defense. And that solved all the problems. And really, to be real about it, uh, uh, Todd Boyles, the coach, defense coach, just had everything came into a stride at the right time. He was a defensive mastermind before he got to the Jets. 
And it took a little luster off his name when he got fired from the Jets. But soon as, uh, and we can't talk about the bad, uh, the job that Byron Leftwich did as coordinator as well. And Bruce Arians having Tom Brady throw down the field. That was not Tom Brady's uh, M.O. to throw the ball down the field. It was really like Chuck, Pat, Chuck passes here. And, and just a uh, quick, fast uh, releasing of the ball and not testing the receivers. So if, uh, if this free agency... Now, here's another thing, thought. If, new, if Drew Brees does uh, re to decide to retire, um, there's other quarterbacks that's on the move. And if they can get that without giving the bank up, just, could you imagine Aaron Rodgers in a New Orleans Saints uniform? I would love that. <laughs> I would love now, it. I don't know how possible that would be because uh, you'd have to put put the bank out for him. But could you imagine that? Or could you imagine the, your boy from uh, Deshaun Watson from Houston, which they say they're not want to going to get rid of him, but it could be James Harden all over again. But we know that Deshaun Watson has proven himself to be an upstanding guy, and that's not his MO to do what James Harden did. But he, he they've taken everything away from him. You know, so if a person is smart, why would I go and invest in a team? They're going to blame me for all, all the problems. But they're taking away DeAndre Hopkins, my best weapon, who's in uh, Arizona. And they continue to get better with Kyler Murphy. So I don't know if, if, if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be the team to beat unless they, they continue to get more rich with their acquisitions. And people want to win championships. They're going to go to a winner. So I got to give them the edge in that regard. But they're also going to be on everybody's radar now as defending Super, champ Super Bowl champions. And I hope that the Saints are in that mix and not just stay status quo, you know. I, I have my hedge my bet a little bit. I mean, I, I think the Saints in division are the biggest threat, without a doubt, to uh, Tampa Bay. I mean, to BW's point, we basically lost the game. It's not that Tampa Bay just blew the doors off us like they did at Kansas City in the Super Bowl. We what did they win? 31 to 20, uh, 30 to 21. It was 30 to 20. Yeah. Right. Drew Brees threw a horrible performance, three picks, directly responsible for the loss, as, as, as Dave said. Jameis came in, was one for one, 59 yards, and, and one touchdown, okay? It's bad when you have to sub in a guy because your starting quarterback doesn't have the arm to throw the 50-yard or 60-yard right. pass. You have to run a trick play to get 50 yards down the play. And to your point, is that Aaron Rodgers and those guys, the whole Don's point, the whole playbook is open when those guys are in. You don't have to sub somebody in. They can throw to that third level, you know what I mean, and not just check down under the field. So we basically lost the game more, not to take anything away from Tampa Bay. They won, came in our house, they won the mm -hmm. game, and they went on. I mean, that grouping of quarterbacks has never been seen before. Brady beat went from – he beat Breeze, Rodgers, and Mahomes back to back to back for three playoff victories. That is That's an accomplishment. So not to take anything away from them, but – we basically blew a game ourselves. We beat them twice in the regular season, and then we went out there with an injured quarterback and not with a hurt quarterback. So on, on paper, I would say in division, definitely the Saints are the biggest threat to them, period. And on the other half of that side of the AFC, if if Kansas City, I was about to call them KFC, like Kentucky Fried Chicken. If, if, <laughs> if Kansas City had a full offensive line, I think that's a whole different game. I mean, they played the entire old line was basically backups. I get playing against a historically great defense in a great scheme. So. Yeah, Dave, but they, they refused to take the check down plays too. There was a lot of, when you look at it, a lot of their men was open underneath, and it goes to the genius of Tampa Bay, knew that they were going to go for these uh, balloon plays. And sometimes you can't, if you don't make adjustments and you want to just impose your will on somebody, you can't impose your will all the time. You got to take what the defense gives you. And then make them change up their philosophy of how they're going to check you, you know? So uh, their offensive line didn't hold up that well, but with the escapability of Mahomes, he should have taken some of those check downs. You know, he should have definitely taken some of those. I, I, I agree with you in principle, but sometimes when you have those backups in, you can make the greatest adjustment in the world. But if dudes are not physically capable of executing those adjustments because they're just not on that level. You know, like you coached a, a A2 team with me. We came up with some schemes and we had them in game, but sometimes when it's, when it's talent that works hard, okay, it, it can't be the scheme. Talent is going to overwhelm guys who are backups. No matter how much you scheme, sometimes you just can't well, physically execute. We yeah. had it's, it's, it's always a matchup issue. It's right. always a matchup issue with somebody. It don't make a difference how talented you are. They had a plan for Tyreek Hill. 
We yeah. had one for him in that game. We played him in the regular season and held him in check a little bit. Right. But they had a plan for him more because we all know the same thing. It's about keeping Mahomes under control and making him truly beat you. And they decided that he's going to beat us in the Super Bowl. And they made sure the receivers, Kelsey for one, they had no check downs with it because they made sure he was covered. Yeah. And it's just a matchup situation. And Tampa Bay came on at the right time. You know, their defense turned up at the right time. When we beat them 38-3, to I will tell the guys at work, that's the last time you're going to see that Tampa Bay team look like that. You know, because Tom Brady brought them into the league or brought it up with one thing. You're only playing for four games. You're not playing 16 games. There's only four games that really count. He brought that New England Patriot way to Tampa Bay, and everyone bought into it, even Bruce Arians, who, in my opinion, was just an offensive coordinator with a clipboard because the coach <laughs> was the one with the helmet and the, and the jersey. He was out there coaching that team, and they, they went along for the ride. Him and Gronk, Antonio Brown, they just took him along for the ride. And Tampa Bay, that's why I say I don't think – I'm like QT. I don't think Tampa Bay is that – Super Bowl champion team that can make that deep run for a few years. You know, mm -hmm. even if Tom Brady stays another three or four years, I think it's just simply a, it was a moment thing. You know, they, mm -hmm. they caught on, they caught on fire like Baltimore did a few years ago. They caught on fire, caught the league off guard. They're going to be ready for them. Now, I always, I still say the Saints because for five years, we have been perennial favorites to be in the Super Bowl. Bad timing here, injuries there, and just, you know, to play in the, oh. the NFC Championship game against um, the Rams. That one that bothered me to the day I closed my eyes, you know. And that one is just a lot of bad mix of timing. But if they ever, that's why I think I think Drew Brees cannot retire. Because I really don't, Dave, I don't see anyone in the free agency who, I don't I don't trust Deshaun Watson the same way most people do. I don't think he fits the scheme. Cam proved that it doesn't work in New England. All that talent. Well, Dave, here's, here's my counter to that. Okay, he might not fit the scheme. Did Taysom fit the scheme? Did, Ted, did Bridgewater fit the scheme? It's like what, what we're proving is, which we talked about maybe last week on the show, which the Saints are proving is, we're winning without having a quarterback throw 300 yards like the Drew Brees of old. We're winning from the running game and the defense is why we're winning. We ain't winning because of Taysom Hill, even though no. he's instrumental. We weren't winning just because of Bridgewater. We, Bridgewater's basically managing the game and not turning the ball over. So it's like we don't have to have, have, to have a report a replacement for what the 25-year-old Drew Brees was. All we have to do is have a solid quarterback who's not going to throw turnovers and can extend the defense and keep the chains moving. Because we're not winning with quarterback play anyway. Kamara's the man on the team. If you to be to be honest with you, the weapon, the offensive weapon is Alvin Kamara. That's the guy they go out to try to stop. They don't go to try to stop Drew Brees anymore. They go to but try you to know psychologically, Dave, you know when you're running behind a Hall of Fame quarterback of any player of any caliber like that, players come in knowing that I have to. I have to at least halfway fill the shoes of this soon to be future first round, first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, Cam had the thought in the back of his mind, I'm replacing Tom Brady, mm -hmm. you know, in this way. That ran through his mind. There's a couple of times he lost the game. He looked so dejected, like he was never going to play football again. I believe he's yeah. the greatest of the generation. I just don't like you got to put these guys in their own personal bubble. The Michael I, Jordan nah. LeBron James conversation should not be had at all because it. It kind of does a disrespect to the past previous players before and the ones that's coming ahead. Patrick Mahomes may go on a six-game tear and win the Super Bowl. Are we having that conversation again about who's the greatest of all time? I don't know. I couldn't do it. I just really even join them for the moment they're in. Tom Brady is the best quarterback of this generation. I would put him in there with no problem. The goat bang Tom Brady is 40 years old. He's got two generations. <laughs> well, you know what? That's true. That's <laughs> just, that's just two generations. You're right. You're right. He done put 20 years on this bad boy. <laughs> I get it. I, I do. I do, man. But I just like to. I like to enjoy each one for them for their little slice, you know, right. and let them have that because it's it's hard to, to live up to that kind of legendary performance. 20 years of excellence. You don't. You know. You're never going to see that again. You're never going to see that again. But Mahomes could go on a tear. And win six in a row, then we have this conversation when we're 70, you know. So yeah. by that time I won't be worried about football too much, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, let's move on to our next topic. Um, Anthony Davis played last night uh in a win against uh, Memphis, but he sat out the previous four games. It ran an ultrasound on his Achilles uh tendon. He's tendon, he's been having calf issues. Um, does this affect the Lakers with a uh hurt Anthony Davis during a regular season? or maybe you don't play him throughout the season, does this diminish the Lakers' chance of winning a uh, championship? I could start that one. Yeah. When is the trade deadline? 
because okay. it gives you it it gives you motivation to get some other pieces to buoy your your starting five because right now from watching that game last night a lot of people was on audition last night a lot of people kuzma was playing his behind off playing a certain role and it's like they letting him be on the on a trading block for somebody to me and so i don't know if they're going to go after somebody like anthony drummond because mark gasol is uh i don't think he's working Oh my God. He's doing a great job passing the ball. And I know what the Lakers are trying to do. The Lakers are trying to build championship pedigree as part of their DNA. Because you look last year, they had Rajon Rondo, who has won a championship. They had Danny Green, who won a championship. And they're trying to, to replicate that when they lost Danny Green and lost um, Rondo. So let's bring in another guy who has championship experience. But Marcus Gasol's champion experience was only from one year with Toronto, which was the previous year, right? So I, I, I really believe that Anthony Davis has always been kind of flim flam with his with his health. And you need to you need to get somebody in from free agency that's gonna help you in any event that uh that he goes down because they need they need that combination of A D and LeBron James to win. They came back from twenty points against Memphis. They came back the games previous without Anthony Davis and won in overtime. One was in double overtime. But that's not sustainable at all against a good team. So they need to make they, they need to make that happen. And I, I applaud the Lakers for doing something that the Golden State Warriors didn't do. They don't rest their players when there's a need. What do you uh, think I, the I would, importance? What do you think I, the importance of Anthony Davis is to the Lakers? Oh, he's all of it. He's all of it. He he's their friend. He he's their their whole their legacy is built on him now. That's what LeBron's been trying to do. I think he's been trying to get him groomed to be the next symbol of that team. You know, I'm, if Kobe was alive today, he would he would be elated that this is where it's going. Because all LeBron ever wanted to do was simply teach the next one. Mm. You know, and you really do need. A, a, it's not so much about a franchise player on a team as it is you got to be a representative for the NBA. And I don't know. I didn't know too many of them out there who really want to take on that responsibility. Kevin Durant gave that up a long time ago. Kyrie, I don't know what to make of this guy. You know, we know about Draymond Green. Steph Curry has all the things that, that can make him that, but it takes, it takes a stronger individual to be able to really lead the next generation to the NBA. You know, you got to be global. And Michael was that guy, you know. And, I mean, being a great talent, we all know they got talent, but it has to be more than that. And I think Anthony Davis is everything to them. Everything. I, would I rest him? Yeah, I would rest him. I mean, I don't know how deep into the games this year. I haven't been paying attention to him. But I would rest him and give him a little bit of reprieve. Because LeBron can hold it down for a little bit with what they got. I'm like you, T. I never really believed in Marcus Gasol that much anyway. He's not his brother, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I, they should have kept Danny Green or Rajon. One of them, you know. One of those guys should have been there. You still need that experience, you know. All the talent in the world, but that, if that head ain't right, you know, it really don't make no difference what you got going on that, that court. If that head's not right and focused in, and a lot of the young guys don't don't focus in the way LeBron does. I, I, I'm not a big, like a LeBron lover like most are, but I've come to admire him over the years because of the undue criticism. But one thing I do admire more than anything, he's a hell of a teacher, you know. He's a hell of a teacher. He, has, he, he loves doing that. He loves to be able to teach and show, even if they're not ready to accept that which is a hard thing to do these days. These guys just think that because they're talented, they can jump anywhere and do anything. Yeah, Anthony Davis is all important. And if he, you, you got to protect him like he's the, the geese with the golden eggs, man. You do. <laughs> you really do. You know, but like I said, I had to see the game, so I don't really know. I haven't really watched what's going on with him other than the fact that I saw some of the, you know, when they got the offseason, who they went and got, and I said, I didn't feel Mark Gasol the moment they got him. I said, ah, you know, I just didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. So that's my take on that one. I, I, you know, I agree with Ty and Dave. Uh, the, uh, more with DW and the fact that Anthony Davis is going to be the face of the franchise in the future. The thing that you have to worry about with that is when Anthony Davis plays uh, those minutes and he can do everything, that will put you at a greater chance for injury and risk. He can run the point, he can rebound, he can dunk, he can shoot the three. So now you're putting more wear and tear on your body instead of just playing one position and waiting for the ball to come to two. 
Um, so I think it is imperative that you rest, uh, Anthony Davis. I think I think it's important that you also say have the mentality next man up. You got to have the next man up mentality. All champions understand that you're only as good as the number of men that you can put in in rotation as you go along in the season. And we find out more and more in the playoffs that if you don't have depth, you cannot go deep in the playoffs. So Lakers are saying, you know what? We're not going to wait to find out in the playoffs if our depth can step up for us. We're going to use them now. And I think that's that's key to any team going deep and making a run to the championship is how good you can make your bench and how good they can play against somebody else's starting five. And, and I, I see it in high school sports all the time. The deeper the bench, especially with girls and boys basketball, mm-hmm. the deeper the run in the playoffs. And I'm seeing coaches now doing two starting fives. They'll give you one starting five for the first quarter, one starting five the second quarter, and you're like, man, where are these cats coming from with this talent? But they've, they've learned a way to bring in two starting fives to, to help them make that playoff run. And the Lakers got to do it. They got to figure it out. Because if they don't, there's – you know, of course, the Utah Jazz is surging right now. They, they're playing some tough ball. Uh, you got other teams, Dallas Mavericks making a push. Unfortunately, our Pelicans are still trying to find their identity. I think they have wonderful talent. Like you said, Dave, the youth is there, but your head got to be right. They're still trying to find a, a defensive identity. And until they can do that, they're not going to win a lot of games by outscoring people. So, you know, you're looking at all of these factors – where it plays in. And yes, I would rest Anthony Davis to make sure he's in tip top shape and ready to make that playoff push. So I, I, I agree that I think Anthony Davis is a key to a championship. Um, when he first joined LeBron James told, um, oh, who's the owner of Jeannie, Jeannie bus. He told her, he said, I will get you to a finals. He said, I guarantee you, I will get you to a final. But the acquisition of Davis basically tells, guarantees you that it's going to give you a way better chance to, to win. LeBron James has proved through, proven through his whole career that he can take the worst team in the league in one year, which he did in Cleveland, and the very next year bring you to the finals for four consecutive. Now, when you will you win again? Uh, the saying, what is it sa- uh, saying? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, Okay. But when you play in those historically great teams that you're going to face in the finals, okay, there's only so much that hard work, you know, can get you when you, when you don't have the talent. So I think Anthony Davis is the key to uh, a championship uh, for the Lakers and that you rest him as long as you have to. I think Montrez Harrell, I watched him last night, and Schroeder were phenomenal pickups for the Lakers because LeBron is just about averaging his average. He's maybe a point and a half off his average but he's playing almost like seven minutes less per game uh, than he did because you can hand the keys to Schroeder and those guys could get you buckets at will. Him and Harrell are dogs on the offensive side. So everything doesn't hinge on LeBron James like it has in the past. Like the other teams when LeBron went out, it's like they looked disjointed. They didn't know who was going to pass the ball, where the offense went mm-hmm. through. And those were two guys, uh, Harrell and Schroeder. They don't need LeBron out there to score. They can get their buckets, you know, anytime they want to. So I think you could ride those guys during the regular season. LeBron has proven, other than Carl Malone, probably to be the most durable guy in the history um, of the N- in NBA. So you can ride LeBron during the regular season with semi-high uh, minutes and milk those guys. Uh, but you gotta you gotta rest um, Anthony Davis. I think everything the, the championship hinges on him because you're looking out of uh, as y'all talked about. Uh, Utah. Utah is looking great with their one-two punch of Donovan Mitchell and uh, Gobert, and then all the shooters, every shooter known to man, surrounding surrounding them. Um, Dallas is coming up. I'm still not sold on them because they don't play uh, defense. I think they and I think they chicken hearted uh, too. Uh, Ty Lue's got the Clippers looking um, a lot better also, and and if you come out the West, you still have uh, you got guys like Brooklyn coming for you, and you have. Miami Heat hasn't gone anywhere, and Giannis is still hungry, you know. Uh, and and then you get to play a dominant big with uh, MB if Philadelphia 76ers come out. And uh, to to your point, uh, Tyrone, Mark Gasol is not the answer um, at center. That guy can't guard a lemonade stand uh, right now, you know. That he's horrible. 
I mean, he's good at facilitating offense, some great passes, but I was good with them getting Gasol and then keeping somebody like JaVale McGee that could defend the rim. But you get rid yeah, of I like and McGee? Oh, no. Yeah. They, they got to they gotta make a move because, you know, they might be play, facing Embiid. And if they don't have a center that can match up with Embiid, they in for a long, long series. And I watched that happen to LeBron James, his MVP season, when Dwight Howard was playing Orlando. Cleveland was the best team in the league, but that matchup nightmare with Dwight Howard, and they only had like J.J. Hickson guarding him, was, it, it just killed everything they were trying to do. So it just it took your greatness away when you got a guy that dominant. So I think uh, Anthony Davis is the future of the team, as D.W. said. I think you rest and nurse that Achilles. The last thing you want to do is do a Kevin Durant. If y'all remember with Golden State, they rushed him back out there, and everybody in their grandmother saw it and said, man, that's his Achilles. And then the mm-hmm. organization kept saying, oh, no, it's calf. It's his calf. And everybody who knows anything about basketball or seeing Achilles injury, everybody looks at, man, his Achilles just popped. That's not a yeah. calf. And he went out there, and he was dancing before um, the game started and dapping everybody up, and he wasn't out there for 15 minutes before his Achilles popped on him. So um, you, you don't want that again. This guy's a franchise. He's 27 years old. LeBron is what, like he will be 37 or something this year? Uh, something like that? Yeah, 35. 35, 30, 35. 35? Is he 35? Well, he's up there. He's he's ancient yeah. for basketball, uh, professional basketball. So, so you know he's the future. So my, my take is you rest uh, Anthony Davis as 36. much 36, I'm sorry, correction, 36. That's all good, 36. He just made a birthday, December 30th. He, um, he uh, to Don's point, by Anthony Davis playing all those positions and getting a bro- growth spurt, he has a he has a degree of awkwardness to him when he plays. He's great, but he's he's always hitting the ground. He's spinning the wrong way sometimes. He he leans in and stuff. So Anthony Davis can get a little you know get injuries just by the way he plays. The level of awkwardness that he has. It's like he it's just like he had a growth spurt from being a, a little man that handled a ball to a big man. And he's got a he's got a funny build if you look at Anthony Davis too, so there's a lot of things they can do on the court. I think protecting him from himself is to give him that rest that he needs because because Gobert, Embiid, all these centers are there, and you let Dwight Howard go too, who's Dwight Howard is turning out to be a, a great leader for the Philadelphia 76ers, which who knew that was coming? But to date, DW's point, you could see the influence of LeBron right there on everybody that was with with him you know so anyway well you saw what happened with Dwight Howard when he was with Kobe you know and yeah the, these this general this younger generation is not used to that kind of leadership where it's kind of in your face and LeBron is smart enough and savvy enough to know not to employ his leadership and his authority in that fashion you know he knew he had to you do have to kind of coddle these guys a little bit you know we all grew up in a generation where the coach can grab you and shake you and you got you're gonna buck up and you're gonna you're gonna handle it you know you're not gonna you're not going to cower under the pressure. I mean, the times y'all done teased and ribbed me when I've done something crazy on the basketball court. I'm not going to go in the corner and cry about it, you know. I'm going <laughs> to tighten up and do it. Dwight couldn't deal with Kobe, and LeBron knew that. You know, LeBron knows that. So that's not the way you approach the Anthony Davis and the, and the, um, the Go Bears and individuals like that. Well, you know, DJ, I, I, I never want to compare LeBron to those type of guys. They want to make LeBron that type of guy. He's not. Kobe and Jordan, that's a different thing. I always believe that perhaps in a one-on-one matchup, Kobe will beat LeBron more likely than he would beat him. Jordan would beat LeBron. But five oh, no, Kobe, no, 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 no. But listen, listen. Five Kobe's versus five LeBron's on in a game, they, they won't beat him. Won't because be- Le- LeBron has always been a facilitator, has always been edifying the players around him, where Kobe, Bryant, and Jordan is like, all about themselves and you come ride with me. So I couldn't see five Jordans playing or five Kobe's playing and having any success where everybody want to take the big shot. Where LeBron historically has tried to give other people opportunities, you know, and so um I, I just believe that that LeBron is a different type of player in the ilk of like Oscar Robertson. I, I believe mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. I agree. He's always been unfairly compared to the Kobe's and the LeBron and the Michael right. Jordans because of where he stands in, in, in the history of basketball with championships right. and his, his pedigree in general. Yeah. But he's more along the line from his training and coach, whoever coached him. They coached him to be 
a team like player, a team like leader. His, his own you know, family. He's not an assassin. You know, he's not an assassin. They think a great play is, is a game winning shot. How about a game winning pass or a game winning block? You know, those little small things that we don't pay attention to on the stat sheet makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's unfair that he gets compared to the Michael Jordans of the world because of who he is. And, you know, he kind of did it to himself by comparing himself by saying, I'm chasing that ghost in Chicago. I would have never said nothing like that. I just would have simply just carved my own name, my own way. But, mm -hmm. you know, everybody has, you know, we all got to have water cooler talk, you know? Right. And he's, he's, he's perfect for that. But, hey, I got, I got much love for him now. I have more love for him than I did a few years ago when I thought it was just simply a lot of fluff. Now I say, you know what? The guy gets unfairly criticized for things that has nothing to do with basketball, you know, just for being who he is, you know, and who he is off the court. It's something that doesn't get enough, enough uh, amplified. Don't get amplified enough. And what he does for his own city, you know, but Guys, it's the world we live in, I guess. I, I think that the, the central theme is there's many ways to be great. You know, it's not just one mold of, of one way to be great. Yeah. You know, we saw we, we saw Michael Jordan, and now it's like this generation of sportscasters say, he's got to have a killer instinct. He's got to do this. Before the, before Michael Jordan, the, the best scorer was never considered the best player in basketball. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Magic Johnson was considered the best player during his time. He never averaged more than 19 points in a game. You know, they had guys like George Gervin would average 30, 35 points a game. Will Chamberlain averaged uh, – one season he averaged 50 and 20, 50 points, 25 rebounds. But yeah. those guys were never considered the best. It wasn't until people saw during it – was, it was a perfect marriage of NBA television and marketing, which created the, the image of Michael Jordan as the basketball player. But before then, scoring was never considered to be the number one thing to consider you the greatest. And once people say, I need a cold-blooded assassin, well, who was that before Michael Jordan who won championships? Okay? It was really, really nobody. Bill Russell was really – and Kareem were considered, like, the, the goats of all time, but they weren't cold-blooded assassin-type killers. And to your point, DW, sometimes it's the game-winning pass, not the game-winning um, shot. But, there, but there's many, many different ways – um, to be great. It's not just in a Michael Jordan mold. But I always look, I agree, but I also look at why we have this conversation about who's the greatest of all time and, and why the you know, press tends to kind of move in Michael's direction. I think it's all about, it's a hero thing. You know, this is mm -hmm. a, in our generation, Michael was our hero, you know, and you don't want to take your hero off that pedestal for nobody. Right. You don't, you just don't want to, you know, we do that all the time. We build them up, then we start deconstructing. But Michael, for some reason, is always going to be these guys. I always think about Skip Bayless. He loves Michael Jordan. But he grew up covering him, watching him. And in his mind, there is nothing greater than that. That's fine. That's your opinion. But it's the hero thing. You know, like the next generation when LeBron is retired, the ones who watched him now, these young, these young kids, when they become young men and older men, we're like, nobody better than LeBron. That's why that GOAT conversation always tends to kind of move me a different direction because – it's not fair. It's not fair. We should love Michael what he did. Michael wasn't really my favorite player on the Bulls team. I was a Scottie Pippen guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I like Scottie for what he did. For he was a Swiss Army knife. He did it all. You know, he just had a different approach to his leadership. We know what Michael was. We love that video game aspect of it. But I think it's just a lot of hero <laughs> worshiping. I, hmm? I thought you liked Luke Longley. I thought Luke Longley was your favorite. Luke player. Longley to me is the greatest of all time. <laughs> I, I like Luke. I'm sorry. Luke is the best. I don't know what y'all talking about. Kareem got nothing on Luke Long. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I don't know what y'all talking about. I don't care how many book shots he make. Luke can do it. Luke can do it all, bro. Trust me. You know. I, I, I want to touch on something DW mentioned, and we didn't jump in, and I know we got another topic, Dave, so I'm going to be brief. But that is this mindset of tough kids and tough athletes and enduring tough coaching. And I think – there's, there's a misnomer in there in the fact that someone who can unify players underneath the same vision versus somebody who's a dictator in the huddle. Mm -hmm. And I think coaches are now seeing more and more that you have to be somebody that unifies players toward a central mission and help them see the best in each one of them to bring them together. I think in times past, we had that kind of dictatorial dictatorship from the coaching aspect where you do this, I do this, you say that, I do this. If the coach tell you jump how high, now people have to be more savvy about how they lead. And people don't respond to the same type of 
you know, top down leadership as they've done in the past, because everybody's saying, well, I, I want to be talked to like a human being. You know, I want to be treated with some respect. And so now that you're starting to treat people with respect and you come from that, the coaches who are able to bring that into their coaching and develop those skills in their players and get them to buy in are the ones who do the most with their teams and their talent nowadays. And, you know, a lot of our kids are lacking that, that uh, self-esteem and they're lacking knowing their gifts and their talents and how to make the best of that inside of a unit. So that's why sports is so important in teaching that and galvanizing young people to help them go toward a common goal. Ask P.J. Carlissimo, he know the deal. <laughs> Speaking of fighting, Dave. Whoa. Speaking of fights. Evil, you know, right? well, hey. We lost a, uh, a boxing legend uh, this week uh, with the passing of Leon Spinks. Um, he died of uh, prostate cancer. I believe he was 68, if I'm not uh, mistaken. What is Leon Spinks' legacy? Do y'all think he was one of the great heavyweights um, of his time? Uh, did he come around at the right time when he beat Muhammad Ali? What do y'all think Leon Spinks' legacy uh, is? I don't see him as one of the greatest of all time. I just don't. You know, I, I think it's just it's just good timing. Good timing. Again, just good timing. I mean, it, sometimes it falls that way. Sports is about luck most of the time, and he he kind of lumped into a little bit of a tiny run and I'll just call it tiny, you know, because we don't talk about Leon Spinks when we talk about Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Evander, his name doesn't get mentioned other than for maybe some things off the outside of the ring, you know, that we're not discussing it, but I'm just saying, you know what we're talking about, but, but um, I, I, I can't, I, I've never seen him as somebody who's going to be considered one of the greatest ever do it. Maybe there's certain things I didn't miss. I might, I may have missed about it, but, all I can remember is that he beat Muhammad Ali one time. And that's pretty much it for his career. And that's all I can think about, you know? So, yeah, if you want to talk about him in history, he can, but not great. Not he, great. No. He, became, he became Muhammad Ali's last act of giving to the sport. And I, and I say that because if you look at these documentaries of when we were kings and, and uh, I think there was another one that with all of the champions would uh, kind of talked about Muhammad Ali and who he was and what he did for boxing. You realize this man helped to create more millionaires in boxing at that time and more money at that time for boxers than any other boxer, because he had a way of promoting the fight that you, you just wanted to come out and see who was fighting Muhammad Ali because of it. And, you know, he, he helped the Ken Norton's, you know, the, uh, the Joe Frazier's, you know, all of those by making this marketability in boxing that never really existed at that time. And so that was, that was Muhammad Ali saying, I'm going to use my name the last time to help you. Because truth be told, Muhammad Ali really could have retired. I mean, he shouldn't have been fighting. Well, he won, no, the, he won the next fight against him. Yeah. Ali, won, Ali beat him the next fight that they had. It was yeah. an unsanctioned rematch, but he beat him. Uh, right. but, but, you know, was that, was that like, okay, a pride thing, you know, to kind of keep Muhammad Ali's name, you know, untarnished at the end? I mean, because you looked at, after that, his sparring partner went on to be the heavyweight champion of the world in, uh, who's the guy with the uh, good... Uh, Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes. Holmes. Larry, Holmes. Larry Holmes was Larry Holmes knocked out. Larry Holmes is, yeah, Larry Holmes is actually a very good boxer. Yeah, he was he's, 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 he's put up in that conversation. You know? Right. That 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 goes back to my point of why Muhammad Ali lended his name to help his another struggling boxer get something. Because otherwise he wouldn't have got any recognition. Think about it. Leon Spinks wouldn't have got no re recognition. I think Don, I think you're right, but here's the here's the other thing too. The, the having that gap tooth, like the missing two front teeth, vampire, and being Ali just made him more than what he was. You know what I'm saying? So there's some fighters that come along and have iconic things that make them a, a certain way. I like. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of this NFL quarterback, uh, Jesse Vargas, Jesse whatever his name. He was a backup in in New England. But because he was a handsome guy, he got more popular doing like the Bachelor and stuff like that than he oh, ever did in football. Jimmy Garoppolo? 
No, no, Garoppolo too, but this other cat, I can't think of his name, is Jesse, uh, whatever. But anyway, a lot of people are going to, if you have a huge afro, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're going to get popular because of that. And, and I think because, like Don said, he uh, he beat Muhammad Ali and had this gap too. That made him more noticeable than than anything else. So, but isn't it all entertainment team? Yeah, yeah, entertainment. And he should have stayed a light heavyweight. He he was um, I, I believe in Olympics he won Olympics for the light heavyweight title or something like that, right? Let me let me read some of the guys that he fought, and y'all tell me if he that he beat, and y'all tell me if it qualifies him as you know a good a good good heavyweight. No. <laughs> no, wow! I didn't read it. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, he had seven fights before, uh, five fights before he fought Ali. And, and to Don's point, let me just say this before I go on: Ali should have retired before he fought Leon Spinks. That third yeah. fight with Frazier, he should have never fought. Not even the coach. Yeah. After yeah. that war, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he was fighting at that point to keep the name moving, he and he was donating money. Yes. He was donating yeah. money to people. Yeah. He has so many, right, Tyrone. He has so many hangers on us who needed money from him with his name and stuff like that, that mm -hmm. he kept going where he, I mean, think about the, the, the people that this man fought, the heavy hitters that he fought from Sonny Liston, who was a physical and literal killer before he even got a ring. Sonny Liston, Cleveland Williams, George Foreman, Joe Frazier. I mean, some of the biggest, mm -hmm. uh, Ernie Shavers. I'm yeah. sure it was big. Ken Norton. Ken Norton. Monster, uh, monster sledgehammers. So he should have retired before he even got to Le Leon Spinks. So as they say, I beat the heavyweight champion. Uh, you beat a guy who was heavyweight champion, but you didn't beat the Ali who was who fought the night of uh, Sonny Liston, the second, the first Sonny Liston fight. That guy was unbeatable in my book. The guy who fought Sonny Liston in the first fight was untouchable, you know. But the, to, to, and that's the Don's point. Uh, but here, here's some of the names. Uh, he had six fights before he fought Ali. Fought Ali twice. Lost in New Orleans in the Superdome. He fought. He beat uh, Alfredo Evangelista, who was a good heavyweight um, fighter. Um, he lost uh, his 15th fight um, to Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes beat him. Uh, he fought. Beat Tom Fisher. Was a pretty good fighter. Um, then he lost to Jose Rabalta, who fought Mike Tyson. If y'all remember Jose, uh, Tyrone said no. Never heard of him. Don't even remember that fight. All right. I know. I know. Dave is reaching to try to stretch this commentary, but go ahead. No, no. I'm he just, about to mention. He getting ready to mention Hulk Hogan. I'm just telling you. Y'all <laughs> think I'm? I'm not putting my uh, money down on. <laughs> Dave, what you say? He's about to. He about to he's mention. About to get Hulk Hogan on the list. <laughs> thunder lips, you know. Gotta get thunder lips, huh? Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah, thunder yeah, lips on there. Yeah. He brought lot. He beat Lionel. Yeah, I was thinking of that conversation, I say, yeah, he might be a great fighter. You know, what like, is it to you that? Club of Land. Did he beat Panthro from the Thundercats? Who, who else did he beat? Nobody could beat Panthro. He might have bit. <laughs> might have bit him with them teeth, though. He might have bit Panthro. <laughs> <laughs> he fought uh, Randall Cobb. Uh, Randall Cobb. He was still alive. Yeah, Randall Cobb. Yeah. Uh, before we, we still trying. We still trying to hear the name that's going to legitimize him, solidify really? him. I, mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why we're still reading. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, well, I guess that answers the question. Man. <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe Randall Cobb could be the one you might want to throw in there, but that's yeah. about it. Okay, hey, Randall Cobb salad. That's what it was. It was <laughs> Ty said you can take, take, you take your reading glasses off. Not read dog. You can take them off. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to reach for him. I tried to give him a little legitimacy, but uh, Ty, you struggling really over there that? too. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Randall Cobb, uh, <laughs> Dave, 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 you're reaching, DW. You're reaching. You're reaching, DW. <laughs> you just we talked about that the other day. About that this yeah. week. I talked to Coach Melvin. We just talked about that this week. Really? I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Over so, everybody, so everybody in here who's never heard the story, I'm going to tell you. You don't story. have to play anything, but go on the show show. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> tell the story. We were playing the men's teams in a travel tournament in, in uh, Mobile, Alabama. And so we were down to, I think we had five guys. And so we had probably like 10 seconds left on the clock. Coach Melvin, if you're listening, Coach Melvin, this is a shout out to you. Coach Melvin calls a perfect timeout with 10 seconds left. He said, look, we up. Only thing they could do is throw some desperation shot at us, okay? 
DW, you got four files. One more file, file and you're out, okay? You got a tendency to reach when a man comes out, okay? So when a guy pays by you, don't reach. Just let him go. We're going to send him to the shot block, all right? Don't do nothing crazy, and we're going to go home champions. Say, all right? The ball got tipped in. <laughs> Pussy blew the whistle ball in. A guy ran past DW. And what did DW do? DW reached on a guy. They called a foul. Tweet! Sent the guy to the foul line. Coach Melvin was steaming. Are you reaching DW? You reaching DW? You're reaching DW. Sit down there next to me. I can't you. <laughs> <laughs> guy made both yep. free throws. And we go to overtime. I think we did. We lose in overtime. I think we lost the game in overtime. We did. Yeah, Don fired out. Dave fired out. It was me, uh, T, uh, and some other people. <laughs> some, some other names. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Randall Cobb. You know. Randall Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We always make sure to play basketball. Right. Right. Yeah. Some other heavyweights. Yeah. We got. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Dave. I remember that vividly. Yeah, yes, yes. But shout out, shout Thank out to you. I drink my Sunny D light now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the guy with no defense drinking Sunny D. Look at that. Wow. Oh, 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 boy. oh. I, I, like I said, it's his show, bro. I got to be quiet. I don't want no liabilities. Nice. Play him for the beard, DW. Play him for his beard. Where, where's Don's Sunny D? Huh? I thought you said the guy who. I thought you said the guy with no defense is playing uh, drinking Sunny D. No, Don, Don drinks Sunny O. That's <laughs> on the offense. <laughs> yeah, he goes to the store. Why is this Sunny D? I don't want any parts of this. <laughs> yeah, 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 would think I had never played defense a day in my life with these cats, man. Yeah, <laughs> that young man over there had a shot block. I'm the one who told him that. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> Tell him about the basketball party, bro. Tell him about my basketball basketball party, bro. DW. Don was like, bruh, I don't think we ought to have a basketball game as a bachelor party. David said, bruh, it's my basketball. I'm getting married. I want to do it. Don's like, all right. All right, man. I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't want to be walking down the aisle flim flam, bruh. You know, looking weak and stuff like that. He said, so I'm not going to play any defense. So David said, well, we good then because you don't normally play defense anyway. Like that. We all get a good laugh on it. All of a sudden, we're playing, bruh. This dude comes down the lane. Jerry Guy. Jerry Guy with his elbow up like this. Don, Don backs up. Me and David trying to get to Jerry Guy. We can't get past Don because Don is backing up. Give him a free lane down the thing and he made the layup. And then David looked at me and he's like, bro, I didn't think it could get worse than that. <laughs> when this man said he was going to play no defense, he really didn't play any defense. And Don looked at us like, see? I could got hurt right there with that. <laughs> <laughs> you got these wild people around. that don't play basketball that coming down the lane full steam. They're ex football players. You know what that leads to, right? Yes. An injury. Yes. Now, I'm yes. not going down yes. the aisle representing my brother with stitches and butterflies. <laughs> oh, looking like Leon Spinks, right, Don? <laughs> looking like Leon Spinks, cotton <laughs> in my mouth. Looking like Ye Yeechi Dan from Uptown Saturday Night. Look at Don if he can sign. Don't be like, yes, I can sign. I can sign for you. Don't let, don't let him sign my witness stick, Tarot. Not looking like that. <laughs> Pick him up, try. Pick him up, try. And deal with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, you know. I sure did miss that one. I wish I was there for that one. Yeah, yeah. We won all the games, though. Let's just throw that out there, too. We won all the games, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, did. Oh, well, you know, it's all good there. You know, so good. But, now, DW, now, when we have basketball players on the show, we always conclude with, with uh, Tyrone shaking his head. We always conclude with this final question. You played ball with all three of us all the time. Uh oh. There's a, there's a two on two game. Uh huh. Who's you, who are you picking to be your partner to win two on two out of the guests on this show? Man, why would you put me on the spot like that, bro? <laughs> really? Why would you do that? You ain't the first. You ain't the first. We we ask everybody in the show who plays ball. We ask everybody. Okay, who, yeah, who, you know the last the last time we did that, it was me and you that played them. That's right. It was me. Y'all win? Yes, oh, we did. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry, you know. I'm, I don't recall that. I don't recall that. Well, I'm sorry you didn't take your medication today, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Ty, whenever you're ready, my brother. Ty, whenever you're ready, my brother. Let's do it. Let's do it. I love you, Ty, whenever you're ready. Hold on. Let me finish this. 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 Let
finish now. It was you me and Dave the first time we played it. y'all. Me and Dave played y'all. We beat I y'all. I switched the water. Then I think another time before that, it was me and Don that played. You know, T, you me and you never lined up. It was so you saying I'm the weak link. You saying I'm the weak link of this whole thing. No, don't even look. Don't go throwing words about Bob, bro. This ain't the second impeachment. Hey, now. it might be true. It is true. <laughs> I was going to know you're not the weak link, bro. That, that, that's your brother. I'm going to let y'all fight that without the TV go off, okay? So, you know, you got to get me caught up. But it was me and Dave that played more often than not against you two guys. You know, most of the time it was me and Julio, and we all knew the outcome of that. You know, so, <laughs> so, you know how that went down. We all know that. If you don't know, they will explain it to you after the show. <laughs> they will, you know. They love rehashing history, okay? So, but, yeah, it was always me and Dave. And I'm not going to get caught up in this who is the better player, you know? Who's I'm the better player? No, no, we didn't, we didn't ask that. We just asked who you who would you like to play with if we had to play two-on-two two with the guests here. Who would you like to play? We're not asking who's the best. You mean right now? Who's the best fit for you to win a game? Who of us four? Any of one us? of y'all, because I ain't played in a minute. I'll take any one of y'all, because y'all going to do all the work. I ain't playing no d Don. Oh, I ain't that ain't no, no d that, <laughs> that ain't a stretch. That ain't no surprise. I know you say it's not a stretch. I ain't playing no D. This is Sunny D. That's all it is. But I'm like Don Sunny Oprah. <laughs> so, you know, everything gonna be layups and pass. You know, so. you do the shirt says Sunny Oprah. I gotta get him a shirt now. Yeah, Sunny. O- hey, I still got our, um our jersey, man. Ah, Brothers Grimm. I got the Brothers Grimm sitting in the room. So next time I will wear it. I will come out and I will wear it. Don't okay. change the subject. Who's your teammate? He said, "Dump you, you jive turkey, you." <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can't do it, bro. I can't do it. Wow. All right, me and Donna take y'all on there. He said huh? he played more often with you, Dave. So let me let, let, let me. Me and Donna do it, but he, he's your we, guest. We, we, me and Dave played you more often because you know y'all always you two had the most the bigger rivalry. Me and Don, me and T was more like the facilitators for y'all rivalry. You that's, the that's, ones, that's exactly right. The ones who egged you on for the mustache. Right. It's me and T who were the background enemies, the villains, the Lex Luthers of the world. Who said, "Let's get him to play with a mustache." I remember that they played the leg front by the U.S. Batman know. versus Superman. Let's there let you go. And, I, and I'm Lex Luthor with the white suit. I ate. You know. Hey, Dave. Huh. They never, they never finished that matchup, right? They never played it. They never played it. They oh, they started it. playing it. Well, they just never finished it. Well, you know what? I, I got something since y'all two, the, the uh, super villains and the instigators. How about me and Don play y'all two? How about that? That's why right, I don't care. We can do that. <laughs> ain't scared of that. You're not scared. Worry about that. I ain't scared I'm not scared that. of it, but I'm not betting no money on it either. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hedging my bets on this one, brother. We can play it, bro. Right, well, y'all been hide your kids, hide your kids, hide your wife if you play that match. <laughs> hey, we ain't scared of it, DW. I ain't scared. Right, on, DW. Hold on, let me put my glasses back on. I can't see that. Anyway, <laughs> I'll be happy to play. I would be happy to play you two knuckleheads if y'all gonna talk that stuff. Ooh. That's oh, right. Man. I'm challenging because you know I beat y'all one on one anyway. You know, oh, y'all, y'all that's the that? matchup. That's the matchup. That? You remember that? Oh, At your school, that you were the principal on your court. Woo! Was you down? Is that right towards you? Huh? Oh, I'll be day two. I, I stay. <laughs> no, did that mean beat me? That beat me. Don beat, beat you. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Who Julio didn't play me one on one. Well, Julio, Julio, Julio had the beat. first matchup. Don had the hard bracket because him and I drew straws and me and him played face off one on one. Right. You had, you had the route. Tyrone and Julio beat each other to death. Oh, no, me and Al. Me and Al. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, beat, I beat Al to get the right to lose to DW. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That was his chance for the final. It was the war of attrition be- between Tyrone and the water boy. Once Bobby Boucher got done with him, he was no good at hey, it. Say, bro, y'all be and I was the kicker on the team. You know what I'm saying? I was the kicker on the team and beat Bobby Boucher. Don, y'all told me to pick a number. I picked the number, so I, I, I drew the bye. had a bye week, and then DW face off fresh in the, in the thing. You didn't play me, partner, because you would not have that advance if you played me in a one-on-one. Ooh. 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 Shots you fired. What? I'll be back. I got to go to foot line. I got to give me some tennis shoes. I got to give me some tennis shoes. I'm coming. I'm flying down there today, bro. You know, you don't pull me out of retirement, bro. Let me go shave my head. You know, <laughs> let me get ready for this. But, you better go to shoe carnival, bro, because them price is expensive at Foot Locker. Bro. <laughs> you ain't lying, bro. I, bro, I can't, I can't afford that, man. I don't, can't wait till I get my COVID check, bro. So I can get that shoe, you know. So, bro, <laughs> this, this is gonna be the bet. When I beat him, I wanted to make a jersey out them curtains in the background. That's what I want. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, you got it, you got it. I want that championship belt in the back too. Where you get that thing from? 
The one in the back there. Yeah, this is our four on four belt. You know, you haven't been down here. You've been up in Wilmington, North Carolina since the hurricane. You know what I mean? But this is how we roll now. We put we come in with our squad four and four. They bring their free. DW would be on our team, though. That would be part of his belt, too. Because DW's oh, yeah. always been on our team. Part of the, or you'll be part of the championship, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what y'all do? What y'all do? Oh man, I miss all the stuff, man. You know, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, all I, I got was a, all I got was a happy meal from y'all, man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, y'all got a championship belts, got a gold medal on the back, you got a first relief. Man, this is, and I got a Saturn curtain. What kind of stuff? No, we're in a different you know? stage in our life now. We just work with Mr. D. We ain't have no money then, bro. <laughs> different stage in life now. You ain't lying, bro. Ooh, that's, not, that's a whole other subject for a whole other show. Let's not go there, bro. Trust me. We're well, fellas, I got to get ready to run. Can we, uh, let's just wrap it up hey, there. Let's shut it down. <laughs> Thank you, Tyrone. Would you certainly enjoy this moment? Appreciate that. <laughs> Wrap it up, D. <laughs> That's good advice for a lot of things, Tyrone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I see where you go. Uh, I see why this show get ready to devolve to. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I had a ball. We enjoyed having Dave uh, on all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina. We have a, a local legend who's not local anymore. Uh, but hope to see him uh, mm -hmm. soon. The next time we get a chance, either come out of North Carolina or next time he comes back. Uh, yes, sir. Very good input, Dave. Uh, all well thought out arguments. Uh, we appreciate your perspective on these things. We miss you. Hope to see you again soon. As always, thanks again to Don and T, cornerstones of the show. And uh, we'll catch y'all next time on Shoot the J.